Hey, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm doing another 200 amp service with service entrance cable. Uh, behind me is the service, as you can see. We've already got started. And we got the meter pulled and we've cut out from the utility. And that's where we're at. So now I'm gonna take that. All right, so the second thing I wanna do after I've cut out from the utility is remove the old service. And most of this is done with a sawzall. I'm actually using not even a sawzall, this is a hacksaw. It's an 18 volt tool, uh, which is good. Just cutting out these old pipes, these old conductors, just getting this thing set up for the new service. And so this usually takes a half hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour, taking it down. I'm working by myself and then I break it down into smaller pieces. Change that oh, no. nice. I always find it much easier to work with this service entrance cable, the 200 amp riser cable, which means it's a three wire. So I got two hots of 120 volts and my grounded conductor to match the service drop from the utility. So here I'm just stripping away the sheeting and getting rid of the, uh, the strings that are in there that keeps it all together. I don't know why they put that together. That's a good question for the manufacturer. But I'm going to set it up on this table, and no matter how I do it, you always fumble with it. The connector that attaches here, you got to have that grounded conductor outside of the actual service head. See how it's on the bottom there, and the two conductors are coming out the top? So it takes a little bit of practice. And here, I learned this a long time ago, just take this grounded wire over here that are in strands and basically twist it together like I'm doing here, like in a round like that, and that brings all the conductors together nicely. Thank you. 
what I failed to show here is that the service head has a, what's known as like a keyhole opening on the top of it. And what that does is that allows me to drive a screw into the side of this house and rest this cable assembly on that screw. So I'm able to attach all of my straps going down the house. Then once I'm done, I'll go back up there and I'll take that screw out. And I'll put a washer in there and I'll attach it permanently. This is the easiest way I know how to put this, put the wiring into this meter. So you see, I have the service entrance cable attached to the house, and then I've already prepped my meter with the holes perforated out of the back of the box. So I'm able to attach it with two inch uh, uh, galvanized screws or corrosion resistant screws, I should say, coarse screws. Uh, and, and then I attach the meter. This is the easiest way to do it. And then later on, I'll come back and I'll do the bottom half with the same service sensors cable after I've drilled my hole to go downstairs into the panel but more on that coming soon just like in my other videos I am using two inch screws uh, galvanized corrosion resistant screws coarse screws and I'm using washers and I am employing duct seal behind the washer so as I'm driving in these screws into the siding here through the aluminum siding and into the sheathing of the house there is duct seal behind the washer so once you screw once you get that screw in the pressure from that washer kind of squeezes in that duct seal preventing any water from getting in in the future this is kind of important not a code requirement uh well maybe it is <laughs> for this meter but this meter enclosure right here is actually property of the utility company psng here so we have to use this particular meter it's got the fifth jaw this is what PCG will uh, accept, and this is what the electrical, the local electrical inspector will require in order to send in a cut-in card to the utility company so they can come out and give you a new meter and bring you up to 2022 standards. Any questions on this, leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer those questions. So here I'm tying in the meter and the wiring coming into the top of the meter is always going to be your power coming in. So we have in this meter what's known as a line load system. That's what we talk about as electricians. And basically what that means, the line side is your power coming in. And your load side is your power going out, basically what you're energizing. And this is important um, because this is where the meter goes in and this measures the electricity that you consume and so it's designed a certain way so it's very important that your line side go to the top and your load side be attached to the bottom uh, i'm using uh, my torpedo level obviously we want to make that sure that was straight that's probably there from when i just attached it um, <clears throat> so it looks like these have some allen keys to um, for the lugs to attach the wiring to the lugs and i'm using my t-handle allen wrench keys um, to loosen and tighten and i'm using a klein ratchet tool right up on the top there that red tool which is very helpful cutting these large conductors it's a ratchet style uh set of pliers a any questions put them down in the comments about that tool a uh, real nice tool to have here You need a license for a lot of shit nowadays. What's that? You need a license for a lot of stuff nowadays. Mm. 
The two ground rods here are spaced six feet apart as required by the code. The grounding conductor, which is called a grounding electroconductor, gets attached to the ground rod by the ground clamp that I'm assembling here. Sometimes people call that an acorn. That's fine. So you tighten this acorn down and so you get a nice physical bond of the conductor to the ground rod. All right, and basically what this does is this eliminates any voltage gradients in the system. If you have any questions, please, down in the comments, I'll be more than happy to ask, answer them. Like in my other videos for 200 amp upgrades, I got to remove all of the cables from the old existing panel. And I believe some of them are going to be short going into the panel. So I try to compensate for that by not cutting the conductors and using as much as I can from what I have. This is important, especially in older houses, because sometimes cables are long, sometimes they're short. And if you have to add a junction box near where that panel is that just takes time and of course you know time is everything when you're upgrading these services because once the power is off you're on the clock to get that power back on and um, that's why that's important so just like in my other videos i'm using pressure treated two by four lumber here okay but instead of using those lags and shields uh, today i tried something i don't normally do uh, as i i drill these um <clears throat> I think it's a 3 sixteenths hill uh, 3 sixteenths hammer drill bit going into the cinder block and I'm using I think like two and three quarter inch um, those blue uh, concrete screws I can't think of the name of them the hammer cons I think I can't remember the name of them at the moment but I'll use those to drive the wood and attach it to the cinder block and then once I have that done it's in there sturdy uh, to where I like it um, I want to get this mounting board in place and I'll use two inch screws here to attach the three quarter inch painted plywood to the two by four that's attached to the wall. In fact, actually I'm using maybe inch and a half wood screws there, maybe. What I do is I carry the electrical panel and i slide the panel up into into the connector the the cable into the connector from the top and uh, this way you don't have to fumble with the uh, service entrance cable going into that connector so here we are again i know some people give me a hard time um i've seen in other videos maybe not me specifically about using the penetrox i'm a big believer in it with the aluminum i believe it definitely cuts down on oxidation i've seen it and uh, I'm always going to put this on. I'm never going to stop.
So here, this is a main breaker panel. So my neutrals and my grounds are, of course, bonded here. And right below that neutral lug, you can see the green main bonding screw. We call that in the trade the main bonding jumper. And that joins together mechanically the grounded neutral conductor that I'm landing here, okay? And my gr equipment grounding conductors, where this is where they're derived from. Um, I, I go over to more detail in some of my other videos with that, but that's important to clear a fault, okay? If there's any kind of ground fault situation or a short circuit situation, what you're doing right there is you're providing a path for the fault current to flow from the fault back to the source, which would be the generator, which would be the transformer out on the pole right here, to send that excess of current as quickly as possibly to facilitate the circuit breaker. That's why that main bonding jumper is so important. I know there's a bunch of videos on YouTube. It's sometimes hard to understand, but once you grasp it, you'll love it. Anyway, so now that the panel is all set, it's towards the end of the day here. I got, the, I got a light on up at the top there and I got my camera mounted to the ladder I believe I don't do this too often but I wanted to make this happen so you get an idea of what it's like up there on the ladder so these are the new service entrance cables that I'm attaching these butt splices to uh, they're sized for 4 aught aluminum which is what I'm working with here that's good for 200 amp services here in New Jersey a residential side okay that's what the code calls for uh, so I'm going to prep those, and then I'm going to get down off the ladder, and I'm going to move the ladder. I'm actually going to stand on the roof when I'm cutting back in. And that's just because I was in an awkward position on the ladder. And of course, it's live, live electricity, but it's live electricity just like you're working at the house. The thing that's a little bit nervous about cutting this particular service back in is that the siding is aluminum, okay? And so that's the property that will conduct electricity. So you've got to be very careful here. Um, not to touch the house, otherwise there will be some arcing, a black flash, I could get hurt, I could lose my eyesight, so very important here. Once I'm energized back in, I make sure I have 240 volts between both legs of this single phase service and of course 120 volts to ground. I also check the load side for any shorts, any continuity between any of the conductors, which I should have none. And then once I know I have that, I'm able to put the old meter back in and put the cover back on. Unfortunately, I was running a little bit late doing this service, and I did not record doing the grounding electro to the water meter, but that's it right there. It's number two aluminum jumped out from the service side to the customer side. And then, of course, here's my final product of the 200 amp service upgrade in Rawway. If you have any questions, please, down below in the comments, I'm more than happy to answer them. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already, if you could please subscribe and hit that like button, that'd be fantastic. Thank you, guys. We'll see you on the next one.